Welcome back guys and in today's episode we're going from the car that looks like this to a car that looks like this so stay tuned to find out what happened. So a big problem with some of this paint is that the previous owners had no idea what they was doing when they was cutting and buffing the paint. You can see here they've basically gone through to the primer. There's no way of saving that, the paint is way too thin so basically we're just going to have to do a respray. Another problem is this rear bumper has been repainted at some point and it hasn't been repainted properly. You can see it's been done in a base coat and clear. This car is a single stage paint, not a two stage paint like the later VXR. You can see the clear coat has cladded up and the whole rear bumper has gone a different color and slightly pink. So on this side of the car, you can see a little bit better. This is probably the worst side of the car where they've buffed down through to primer and uh, you can see distinctive black line here. It was like this when I bought it. It's always about getting a paint job. I know a lot of cars look good from a distance. You can see here as well. It's just inexperience. It's on this roof as well. Obviously, this car's not been buffed or washed for a long time. You can probably see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's still black primer. Oh, here you go, up here. You can see there's black primer underneath the paint. Just going to get sanded down and a nice paint job over it. There was a little ding here that always bugged me. Just put a little bit of filler in there. Just got to skim it over a little bit more. It was only a little ding. I've pushed it out from behind. Something that's bugged me, and it's been bugging me for a while. These side strips have been off at some point, and then they've been painted again. They've been lacquered. Don't lacquer these cars. This is a 2K single stage paint. So you can see here, stripped everything down. Side skirts are off, you've got the side strips off, spats are off. That window comes out now, I've just got two bolts holding that in. Uh, you can see I've already started sanding down the roof. I filled in a little dent here, uh, uh, primed that over, and it's perfectly smooth now. I've flatted down the whole roof with 400 and 600 grit, so that's perfectly smooth. There's a couple of little stone chips on here that I'll show you when I've cleaned it off. It's amazing you get stone chips on the top of the roofs. I've just dolphin glazed them over and uh, the roof is pretty much ready. So one of the problems now that these side strips and spats have been removed is that on the side of the car, they have been glued on with a polyurethane adhesive and polyurethane adhesive is a real, real tough adhesive to remove. Petrol, all sorts of solvents, it's, it does not go anywhere. And you can see here on the spats, you can see the color, the original color through the, the actual flame red that's supposed to be the car. And you can see the difference it is between the faded red and the lovely fresh paint. So you can see here, I'm just using the heat gun to try and get rid of as much of that polyurethane adhesive as possible so I can get it nice and thin. After I do this, I'm going to use a really sharp Stanley blade to cut it down as close as I can to the paint without damaging the existing paint underneath. So here's a comparison of the fresh flame red paint straight out of the tub just to compare it to the faded paint that's on the car. So you can see here I've gone and removed the rear quarters. Now luckily they're bolted on in these cars as opposed to being glued in. It saves a lot of hassle. You can see the paint behind it, that lovely fresh flame red, which is an orangey red, as opposed to the pink, which obviously they call flame pink because it gets faded over time. That's just due to bad maintenance, no wax, no ceramic coating over the top. Otherwise it would never go that color. Um, you can see on their B pillars here, there was a uh, carbon trim that normally comes with the GSI, and uh, that's been removed, but it hadn't been removed behind the black of the window. You can see it goes up here, and there's like a line there between the two different colors of paint. I'm debating whether to put them back on. They are original, but they don't look great. That's why they get removed. Let me know in the comments section whether you think I should fit them again. 
So I started standing down where the side skirt had been rubbing on the seal, as you can see, a little bit of surface rust. And then I noticed there was a lot of stone chips in this rear quarter. Um, stone chips, as you know, go back to bare metal. So you can see here, I stripped it all the way down. And as you can see there where the stone chips were, little bit of surface rust. So I'm very, very glad that I've done that and gone back to bare metal. I didn't want any of them little bubbles coming back through the paint in the future. So there's a couple of little dings that I found on the door that I pushed out from behind. I'm going to put a skimmer filler on them. So I noticed some more rust spots and stone chips on these rear arches. So I just decided to strip the whole lot down to bare metal and epoxy prime it so they have no issues in the future. So on this car, the rear arches are actually totally rust free. There are no corrosion on them at all. Um, so I decided to strip their back so I could put an epoxy primer protection over them to protect them for another 20 years, just so we have no issues for them in the future. So here's a nice close up view of the arches for you. So you can see once they've been stripped back to bare metal, there's no rust or rot issues in there. So I've just went over the whole bodywork with a gray scuff pad. So as I'm looking up close at the bodywork, I'm finding more and more stone chips that have little tiny rust blisters underneath the paint. So I want to get rid of all of that. So I've gone back to fresh metal on that as well. So the front wing had been painted in the past and it had been done badly. So I just got rid of all that paint off it. So I had no reactions from the paint underneath. You can see along the bottom of the door, more and more stone chips. I decided to smooth it all out, get rid of all the stone chips out of it, any little rust blisters and back to fresh metal. So hours and hours and lots of work later, the car is in a sorry state as you can see, but it's back to bare metal now and I needed to get some primer over it so it didn't flash rust overnight. It's all taped up and masked up so I decided to just go ahead even though it was getting late and get some primer on it. So this is my go-to primer, Novol Epoxy 360, very good anti-corrosion properties. So here I've just block sand in the first coat of primer. This is not necessary, it's just that I wanted to get it smooth for the second coat. In a couple of spots I did go through to bare metal which you will see. So this is the result of smoothing down the primer. You can see around the arch areas and some areas that have been back to bare metal. So that's going to have to have another coat over the top of it, which is okay. The whole car, the whole side of the car is going to have a nice thick coat of primer over it. And then we'll be ready for high build. So I'm just wiping down the side of the car with some wax and grease remover just to make sure there's no contaminants in the paintwork. So this is the second coat of epoxy. I basically put this coat on very thin as you will see and then I put another thick coat over the top of that just to give it a proper protection. So as it was getting late, I decided to start prepping some other parts of the car. So I started scuffing down the front bumper. Lots of little imperfections that I've got to fill in this. So that's going to take a little bit of work, but it will be worth it as these bumpers are getting very expensive. And this is a genuine GM part. So this is the car after the second primer coat. And you can see that primer coat has gone on nice and thick. 
and very smooth. I thinned it down a little bit so it went on a little bit more smooth and I won't have to scuff or sand this before putting a higher build over the top. Right, so you can see here, two coats of epoxy primer over the car. I'm gonna let that go rock hard, bake out in the sun for two or three days, and then I'm gonna put some high build primer over the top of that. You can put high build over epoxy within a seven day window without even needing to scuff it. And you can see, look at the hours I've put into the car to get it perfectly straight, and there's no dents or dings at all in the side of the car, so I'm very happy with that. So once I've removed the window rubber, I could tell that a few little spots had rubbed through to bare metal, probably where sand and grit had got behind the rubber over the past. So I got rid of the whole lot of that wherever it had got any surface rust. And then I went over the whole roof with a scuffing pad. I started off with red, then I went down to green, then I went over the whole lot with a grey scuffing pad. So it's nice and fine and a nice key for the primer to stick to. So when it comes to removing the rear emblem, you could see here someone had super glued it on, which obviously damages the paint. Never do that. You can see what it does to the paint. So I had to sand that back basically to primer. Otherwise I could have just keyed that up. But you can see here, it didn't take long, just sanded it back quickly. And that's the finished result. So then I started stripping down the rear boot. You can see I removed the wiper and the grommet and you have to get the motor out from the inside as well. Very easy job. Move the trim that goes around the boot lock and you can see here I started sanding down the edge of the boot lid. Um, the spoiler sits in this spot and it had rubbed a lot of the paint and damaged a lot of paint and someone had tried repairing it in the past and it just wasn't a very good job. So you can see here I decided to just grind it all the way back to metal like I normally do and start again. And then to finish off the video, I put a couple of coats of primer over the roof and a couple over the boot lid as well, just to seal in that paint. So I appreciate everyone for watching this video. And if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comment section, a little bit different this time. Smash that thumbs up button if you can. See you next time.